Living inside everyone is an intrinsic yearning to be a warrior, yet few are born with a drive deep in their heart to be a warrior and live by it. Learn how to tap into that warrior way, life, and potential to unlock an ancient drive. Join Eric Carball, author, entrepreneur, and former U.S. Marine on the Warrior Up Show each week with segments that will challenge your perspectives, encourage you, and showcases a warrior spotlight where he focuses on what made a warrior. Have you ever thought if you have a purpose or mission in this life? It's time to live on purpose and warrior up. Here's our host, Eric Carball. Welcome to another episode of The Warrior Up Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk today about the dangers of the warrior within. Even though there's many different dangers that a warrior can face, there's three main areas that I really want us to focus on. And it's actually going to be broken up into a three-part episode series. And the main reason why is because each one of these, we really need to dive into each danger area and really focus on them so you can get the best um I guess, meat of the conversation of what we're talking about. And also, otherwise, it'd probably be too, too long of an episode to really go into, to, um, to try to put it all in, into one episode. So this is the reason why. The first one that we're going to talk about is elitism or the mentality of being a prince, princess, king, queen, however we put that. So this danger is a danger that literally is uh, lurks within every uh, warrior. And sometimes it might not even lurk inside of the warrior themselves, but the whole warrior culture. And the reason that I say that is there are those that have the mind mentality of elitism that only are using warriorhood or the warrior culture as a stepping stone to get them where they want to go in life. So they're not really into the warrior mentality. They're not into the warrior culture per se other than the fact that they just want, like I said, they want to use that to get something different. They think it's going to give them the edge into where they're going. We see this in businesses today. We see this, of course, in politicians and uh, the media as as we speak on every side of the aisle. So don't think that I'm only talking about one side because the danger is the problem that we have for both sides when most of us are here in the middle somewhere. So let's talk about that. So this danger of elitism, um, it's really one of those dangers that um, some some individuals, some people from the wealthy class, the elite class, they will actually bring their sons and their daughters to join the military or to be expected of them because they need need to have that in order to achieve certain uh, credibility, so to speak in other areas of their life. And sometimes for a long time, it was about gaining uh, notoriety in politics. That's not so much the case today. So there is a difference. See, warriors have to be confident. That's, that's just the way that we are. We have to be a confident type of person to be able to get to where we want to go. And so people can actually take notice of what we're saying. And also so we can um, not doubt our abilities or the other warrior next to us, their abilities. We have to know that we're trained well, that we can do what we set our minds to do, no matter what. And part of the danger of where elitism comes into, because that brings arrogance. And that is like, like we mentioned before, this is the very first danger to the warrior culture in general and just warriorhood. So we have to be very careful and very cognizant if you're a warrior of what your motives are. So you've got to constantly question your very own motives, not just to, to uh, mention other people's motives ar as around you as well. So this, again, elitism is just, a, it really is a disease in many ways, in many aspects of it. So when you stop being a warrior and you become a statesman or a prince or a king, princess, queen, however you want to say that, or an elitist, this is when you completely turned your back on the culture of being a warrior altogether and you go into that realm. Now, I'm not saying you can't be one of them and not be a warrior because you can. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit as well. The difference is, is when you're seduced by the mentality of elitism. So a perfect example that we see, we've talked about this before, of course, is Hollywood. We see this in politics. We see this in the media. We see this in uh, with many people in um, businesses as 
well. Sometimes you can see big business where they're along this elite mentality. They think they're better than so many other people and they want to lecture everyone on their, what they have um, achieved to be the right or the status quo. The problem with that many times elitism is a moving target. And what I mean by that is their own agenda, their own so-called belief structure moves and shifts and grows and shrinks or evolves like they like to say a lot of times over time while well, I've evolved my point of view. The problem with that, if you've evolved your point of view to that aspect and to that drastic of one side to another side, you're not a warrior. Pure blank, there's no way you were ever a warrior in the first place. Because if you really were, you would understand that your integrity means more than having this moving target of your mentality. So um, from the beginning of time, we've seen this with princes and kings, where the king would impress on their uh, son, the prince, to become a great warrior, because then you can learn how to uh, triumph in battle and you can triumph as a king. And of course, these were the older times. Now, as we've gotten and moved away from the structure of kings and queens, uh, we move more into statesmen. And we see this more and more every single day with um, the media, whether it's the Republicans or the Democrats. And everybody thinks that one side is the right side and the other side is wrong. No matter how we do this, they're both the same stinking party. It's a two-headed beast. They party together. They hang out together. They're not enemies. They're frenemies. And until we, as the American people, realize that they don't care one bit about us, things are never going to change. Because their goal is to keep the American people divided. And that goes for really for any other country. It's a big game to them because their goal is to maintain power and influence, but they're also beholden to the rich and the lobbyists who had bought their seats. So when you look in DC in the mid eighties, the average home price was right around $200,000. Now the average home price in DC is upwards of a million dollars. Why is that? Look into your politicians, your congressmen, and your senators. And I, like I said, I don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat, you start to trace the money back to their family, whether it's their sons and daughters, their son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, their nieces, their nephews, whoever it is. You will find a lot of times that they're lobbying or they work for a lobbying firm that comes back and lobbies their family in order to get them money. That is the problem that we have. And until people wake up and realize what's going on, it's never going to change. All we have to do is look at the current crisis that we have going on with COVID. Now, I'm not going to say one way or another that it was manufactured or it wasn't manufactured because that's not this place. But when you look, there's so much information on one side and there's so much information on the other side. Like always, somewhere in the middle is the truth. And what we have to find out or what we have to look at is the only reason that our politicians even care, power and money. Influence, power and money. See, our congressmen, our senators, our president, our people in power, whether it's on the local, state or federal level, they're beholden to us. There are our employees, and if the American people would wake up and realize that they can make a difference by voting them out and getting somebody new in, that would be a difference. And I will venture to say that 95% of our politicians are an elitist mentality. Sure, there might be 5%, maybe even 2%, which is probably what I think, that are there for the American people, but they're getting railroaded by the other majority that don't care about anybody. So can a prince and a warrior mash up together? Yes, absolutely they can. 
but it's only if that true warrior from within stays in control. Because if they begin to um, lose control or if that warrior is only using that as a stepping stone to become that king, that prince, that princess, that elitist, that is the issue. And we have people who have joined in the past, joined the military, so-called statesmen or so-called warriors, they join the military just so they can use that as a way to get power into being a politician. Like I said, it doesn't happen so much today because there's such an anti-military sediment in this country like never before. But before the 60s and the 70s, that was the very case. And then some of these people would serve just for that notoriety to help them get elected. And meanwhile, they turn their back on the American people. We have some who have been captured and they use that as a crutch to say that they're a hero. Meanwhile, they're selling out the entire country just for power and influence. This is the problem that we have. See, warriors operate in the now of the mission by mission. Okay? They have to be in the now. They have to be in the battle by battle in the middle of everything. It's only through these small skirmishes that wars are won. The problem that we have is when elitism lurks around a warrior, it is never given the full details of the mission. Now, let me say that again. When elitism lurks around the warrior, basically passing what is their objective from maybe a general who's an elitist, maybe a politician who's bringing that information down, who's an elitist. They're never given the true details of that mission, and that makes a dangerous situation for the mission and for the warrior in general and for their perspective because they can't make the right decisions that they need to when they're going to battle. So why, my question, why do so many people get um, seduced by this idea of what elitism is? Because it's flashy. It looks powerful. You can make a lot of money from it. And we have the same idea going on in different businesses today. You've got to look at big tech, the way that they're selling out. You can look at other big companies, how they're selling out. And they're only selling out because their goal is money and power. And the issue that I have with that is it puts a bad taste in the mouth for so many people and it breeds division. See, unity is the only thing that destroys elitism. And until people wake up and realize that they're going to unify with their brother and their sister or their neighbor and their uh, co-workers or whoever it is, no matter what color, race, creed, or political background, imagine if everyone would begin to unite the politicians would lose all power. That's not what they want. That's not what they drive for. Because at the end of the day, the elitists have to have control. They're, it's a drug for them because they get high off of being in control. So if you're a warrior, and just because you wanted to strive to be something better, like I said, there's nothing wrong with you being a CEO, being a politician, being in Hollywood, being in the media, the thing is, don't ever forget your roots of a warrior. Don't be seduced by elitism. And if you find yourself that you have been being seduced by that elitism mentality, get away from it. Turn your back on it. Even if it means that you're going to be without a job, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters at the end of the day is your integrity, your honor, your courage, and what you say to be. So in Matthew 5 37, this is a great scripture and I want you to listen to this. It says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything else is pure evil. Now that's just me paraphrasing a little bit, but that's essentially what it talks about. Because if your yes is not yes and your no is not no, you're wishy-washy. You move to the current structure of whatever the latest politically correct mantra is. 
whether it's right or wrong. And if you're a warrior, you have to stand up for the innocent. You have to stand up for the people that need your help. You have to stand up for truth and honor. And you have to have courage and commitment to do so. It's all about being bold. So I want to encourage you to do what you need to do to stand up and be that warrior you're supposed to be. The, the Warrior Spotlight. So in this Warrior Spotlight, this one isn't necessarily someone that was a warrior. It was someone who was destined to be a warrior. It's no other than Samson from the Bible. And if you are familiar with that, whether it's from school or church or however you, you've learned this message. See, Samson was this guy who had a lot of strength. And he was known by his integrity. He had strength uh, in his hair, which was essentially the where his strength came from. He was seduced by elitism. And physically seduced by Delilah. And that's the problem that we have. Is because she was a spy from the enemy to destroy him because the enemy couldn't get past their armies because of Samson. So as he would sit there, she, he, she would ask, well, what's the secret to your strength? So he would tell her a lie essentially, which was first of all, the, the first mistake that he made. So he would tell her a lie. The next day, her spy friends, warriors would come in and they would try what basically he told her, you would think that after a couple of times of this, even after the first one, he should have got the picture that every time he told her something the next day, they were trying to take that of advantage. And then finally, eventually he finally gave in and said it was his hair. So then they came in, they shaved his head, cut his hair off. And then the rest of the story, he um, had his eyes plucked out. He um, basically became nobody. So he was a warrior or he was destined to be a warrior, but he got seduced by elitism. That's the danger that we have today. So the question that I have for so many today is what are you going to do different? Are you going to rise up and be that warrior that you're supposed to be? Or are you going to be seduced by the elitism, the elite mentality who think that they're better than everybody else? Meanwhile, the rest of us just want to be left alone and live our life in the freedom that we have. That's the danger of every warrior that we have. So are you going to rise up? Are you going to be the warrior that you're supposed to be? And are you going to let your yes be yes and your no be no? Until the next episode, don't forget, warrior up. This episode of the Warrior Up Show has been brought to you by the Warrior Up Book. Available on Westbow Press, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple Books, and more. Buy a book, give a book, and sponsor books for the hashtag books for heroes campaign. Check out warrioropbook.com to learn more about sponsoring books for our veterans.